I think it's okay. It's recording. It's recording. Um, hi everyone. My name is Bridget. I'm with uh, Down Under Air. I figured we'd kind of take this time to introduce ourselves and get to know each other. Uh, I'm Summer Grace. I'm with the federal government. I'm Anna Howard. I'm with uh, the Aussie Air shareholder Texas. I'm Dan Thompson. I represent the labor unions. Okay, I'm Corey Bell, and I am part of the, I'm the CEO of Aussie Air. For this How's everyone's week going so far? Going good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone have any exciting plans for Thanksgiving? It's going to be my close family this year. We're not traveling or anything. The correct answer is no. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much where I am. I'm taking two COVID tests to drive over South Carolina. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I had a negative one the other day, and I'm hoping for a negative one again tomorrow. <laughs> so, that's about it. But, yeah. So, I figured we could kind of lay some ground rules before we go forward. Um, since it is a pretty large negotiation, I was hoping um, that we could kind of all be a little bit respectful and speak all at once. Um, so, one person speaking. Um, and like I mentioned, just be respectful of everyone's ideas and thoughts um, throughout this negotiation. So I was hoping we could kind of discuss everyone's um, maybe biggest hopes for this negotiation and biggest concerns. What was that? Sorry. No. Oh. Sorry. Um, <laughs> I was hoping that we could kind of just go around and hope and talk about um, what everyone was looking for out of the most out of this negotiation um, and maybe some of their largest, their biggest concerns. Okay, I'll start with that. Um, my hopes for this negotiation are mainly just to find a partner to uh, further our organization as a whole. Um, Osier has been really good to me over the past 15 years and the six years, so I want what's best for them in the future. And <clears throat> As now we're publicly traded, and if we were to go privately traded, that could open a lot of opportunities and some long-term investments as well. Um, only concerns are, with my side, are the workers of mine that work for me. I really, are, really want to keep them around and kind of keep building them up. We've had a great thing go in the past five years, and we'd love to be love to keep them around and see what they can offer us in the future. So that's just a few of my hopes and concerns. I love to hear everyone else's. Perfect. I can go. So um, as I mentioned, I'm from down under air um, and we're here to help really broker a deal um, to purchase Aussie Air. So I just wanted to uh, reassure everyone that we're here and looking for the best of everyone involved and we're hoping to um, kind of come with a deal, come together with a deal um, to meet those interests and Well, I'll just jump in from the labor's perspective. Um, I think we're um, you know, interested in finding out kind of where everybody's coming from and, and much like representation from Ossier. Um, no, no surprise, uh, the union uh, wants to be sure that the workforce is well represented and has a bright future uh, with whatever deal might come to the table. And so we're just very interested in understanding a little bit about the, the opportunities or the ramifications that a merger might bring. Absolutely. So, like I said earlier, I'm with the federal government, and we just really want to make sure that everyone's kind of abiding by the Australian laws, and that we really keep Aussie Air owned by at least 51% of Australian sources. That's extremely important throughout this and all the laws. And um, as the shareholder representative of one. You did in, in, on their behalf and their part, and um, as well as the implications of what it, this deal has for the entire Australian uh, um, and our economy as a whole. It's definitely part of our interest, and um, we want to make sure that it's 
Um, so, kind of going off of that, I think we all kind of have um, the, the, the same interest and um, some shared concerns going forward with this um, with this deal. And I and I am um, kind of hoping to discuss um, privately with each of you um, some of your biggest concerns how we work together to further those and kind of answer, find some answers um, that suit both of us. Um, so that said, I um, was hoping I could talk to Azier um, and the CEO, just kind of talking about what you hope through the merger. I know you mentioned um, finding a partner, but I know that um, Azier is a uh, like a a tradition and iconic brand for Australia, except something um, that you, I just want to reassure you that we're going to work together with you to keep that that um, iconic brand going forward. I'd be very interested in talking to you privately and see how we can uh, come about a possible solution to everything. Okay, perfect. Do you want to talk and then us That's our initiative, yeah. right? I think so. so yeah. yeah. I think the three of us could chat while they're chatting if that works for you guys. Yeah. So do we go somewhere else? Yeah. She said either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could just go up here. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I don't know. What you guys are talking about maybe confidential, but. Yeah, or I could just say, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I could just go in the halls. I don't know. <laughs> well, oh, and you're going to take your laptop with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. You. She told us, she emailed us and said we don't have to record our private sessions. So if, if there's private sessions that aren't recorded, she said don't worry about it. Okay. Okay. Thank so. you. Okay. Okay. I may just still record it because. Right. You're going on a walk. <laughs> I don't know where to go. I'm very stressed. Okay. <laughs> We're going to find a room. I'm just going to keep walking. Okay, so you know, um, so I know that you mentioned um, you want to find a partner and find what's best um, for your company, um, including keeping workers and everything. So I kind of wanted to, I was hoping that you would expand upon um, your concerns to see if we could find something that works for both of us. Yes, there's three main concerns. Um, kind of the least important one is dealing with share price. That's kind of least concerned right now. But our two main concerns are our management team and our workforce. As of now, um, you probably know this, all of our, we're a super big Australian company. We rep the brand. We have the kangaroo on the back of our planes. And that's a big, big deal to us to represent our country, or our continent, actually. That was bad. Um, and we want what's best for everyone within our division. So all of our resources right now are in-house. So they're all in Australia. And that's a big deal to us. We don't want to, I know it will cost, it's cost more to have everything in-house in Australia. But that brings so much culture to our brand and brings so much to our nation just to have that everything right down the road, right down the street, the local people, it really brings bright colors to our to our organization and that's just a big key to us and we know it would be cheaper possibly to go out of the, the country and to have things outsourced but that that would be a big hit to our image I guess you could say and that's one of our biggest concerns and also our workers as you know I mean I've been in the CEO for about five years and I've all I've had about was praise over how well we've done and 
the workers work their butts off just to, to build this empire that we've built so far that's brought the interest from you guys to possibly take over. And it would just mean a great deal to us to have the workers that we poss- that we have right now to continue their job and also management. I know that I haven't done a really well job from what I've heard and that my management team has brought up these new strategies within our program that has really succeeded beyond our expectations. And we just believe one of our worries is that when you guys come in, that you're going to take everything and wipe it out and start clean. And that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to ask you about is kind of what is y'all's idea and strategy if we do end up finding a possible deal what is your strategy towards employment within Aussie Air? Of course. So um, that's something that we're concerned that we're interested in, in as well. Um, we are right now, since we don't have firsthand knowledge necessarily on your management team and how they work, um, we aren't necessarily interested in promising to retain the management team. Um, it's not saying that we're going to completely wipe them out but we just don't have a firm understanding of how they work and their mechanism. So if they are successful, um, like I mentioned, we're not going to go in and wipe them out, but if we find that their um, management abilities and their management skills are something of an asset to um, Aussie air underneath um, down under air, that is something that um, we want to retain them. Um, but we may have to make some changes to ensure that it is continued to be successful. Because we want, when we purchase Aussie Air, we want to continue to build upon the brand, like you mentioned, and continue to bring success to Australia. Um, in regards to, is that something that is acceptable to you? Yes. Uh, one of the things that we could end up talking about later down the road, especially when we start getting into numbers and things of that nature, is talking about a possible contract to have those numbers put into place. Mm -hmm. kind of have almost where it's like we sign a year contract to show you what our management's capable of and then we go from there so let's say we sign a three-year contract and and in three years you don't see the management going where it needs to be then down under can step in and place whoever they need in that area because that would mean a great deal to us and to our workers if Mm -hmm. if I come back after this meeting and I'm like oh we just sold it but I don't know where your job's going after this then I'm in a boat. I'm, I'm not, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where they're going. They don't trust me anymore. And if you do happen to make a deal or you do happen to come back in six months and tell me that, Oh, we are going to keep your management team. Well, how am I going to tell my people that, Hey, I don't know how long this is going to last. They're going to kind of run away in a sense, Mm -hmm. in a little bit of a way, but that's definitely something we can, we can figure out because that's definitely something that close and dear to us is just being able to keep running this almost like a baby that's we've been given that we've raised up. We kind of want to keep running with it in that nature, but no, that's definitely something that, I mean, it is an option. Absolutely. And can you remind me again, how long Aussie Air has been in existence? It has been in existence for, I've been here since in 15 years. So we've been, we began in the 1990s, early 1990s. And so we, we've been in business, I guess that's what, 30 years. So I've been here for about half its existence, okay. uh, CEO for about five years. And at the beginning, it was really slow, but now our market, market capitalization is over $11 billion. So we've really grown it into a powerhouse, especially in the Australian market. But then we were able to expand to international markets as well. Mm-hmm. Which definitely speaks well um, to your leadership and your management team's leadership. So... Like we mentioned, we can always t- come back around to seeing how long um, we can keep managers on and sign a contract. Um, in regards to uh, the employment in Australia for the people um, who are not managers within the company, um, you said there's 100% of those workers are in Australia currently? Yes, we um, all of our insourcing, our sourcing of work, whether that's labor, maintenance of those natures, it's all in Australia. So we do not do anything outside of our nation. Okay. And, um, that's something that we would want to keep just because of the local brand. Um, I mean, it'd be kind of, it'd be kind of going against our morals if we were an Australian company, but we were getting all our materials and labor and sourcing from United States or Europe or something of that nature. 
And I kind of want – I just want to hear what your thoughts are on that and kind of what y'all are planning to do in that side of the field. So um, we definitely recognize that Australia um, – it is an Australian brand and to keep as many workers as possible in Australia would make sense um, and would be beneficial for the brand. That said, I don't necessarily know if we can keep 100% of the employees based in Australia. Um, it can continue to fluctuate over the years, but what we are hoping to do is um, maybe keep 80% of the workers in Australia. Um, in that way, um, I'm sorry, excuse me, just let me read this really quickly. So, um, yes, yeah, so we're hoping to keep about 80% of the current workforce in Australia um, with the potential to increase that, but right now, um, financially, it seems like it could be beneficial to outsource some projects. Okay, there's that option. Um, I don't want to agree anything quite yet. I would love to talk to um, the labor union leader okay. before I get into that privately. But um, no, it's definitely an option, especially if we keep more of the percentage in Australia as still to keep that Australian brand. I think if we get over too much outsourced, then if we kind of just lose it in general and then we lose the company as a whole. Mm -hmm. But no, it's definitely an option. Um, as of course, we'd love to keep 100%, but we're willing to negotiate down to what would be right for our workers and for our nation and or for our company and the nation image that it has. But let me, let's segue a little bit into the share price. I know that's mainly what y'all are interested in is, I mean, everybody's interested in money, but um, <laughs> I know that y'all earn or y'all hold a little bit of common stock right now through some different sources, but kind of talk to me about what, what your goals are in, in, and possible shares in the future and kind of what percentage and type of things you're looking for and what ownership, how much ownership you want of our Aussie Air and how much we'll be given ownership. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're here today to obtain 15% um, of the stocks that are currently or the shares that are currently for sale. Um, and that will um, grant us ownership of Aussie Air. So we're hoping to own Aussie, um, make Aussie Air a private company. I know that it went public in the 1990s, um, but we're hoping to turn it back into a private company. Um, and speaking of that, I, I know that the stock price for you, you mentioned it was pretty low. It was a low importance. Um, but I was hoping that we could kind of discuss your thoughts on that and if that's something that you're open to, to having it be a private company once again. Yes, I mean, we're definitely open to being a private company. As we know, we do have to meet the federal government regulations of the 51% ownership by all Australian companies. But let me ask you that, too. I would segue into that. But is down under or is an act, is a uh, Australian company, correct? Like, so if we do make a deal, like all the companies within down under air are Australian so that we would be above that 51%. So not all of them are, um, but there are 51%, it is owned 51% by Australian companies. So we do have an American company and we do have a Canadian company in full disclosure, but within the makeup of that com company, it's 51%. Okay, perfect. Just wanted to make sure we reach that. Yes. Um, no, yes. Share, share price is on the lower end just because of wanting what's best for my people, but it's definitely still up there. Um, our organization our leaders myself included and our management has outstanding shares that do still mean something to us and still do mean something to our share price and to our shareholders as well they're trying i mean they put their belief into us in the beginning and gave us that initial investment so we want what's best to them to have that investment in the end so as we are still low we are still 11 billion market capitalization as i mentioned so what's fair price will be fair price and we feel like that will come but I'm definitely open to different areas of that but of importance management and workers are my top priority in that nature but I definitely want to discuss with the other um, group members before we continue in that regard and um, with that in mind I will go um, join the rest of the group if that's okay so, gonna go for another one. <laughs>
What's the um, – what's so it's Anna Summer Grace, and what's the guy that is in, in our class? I think his name's Dan. Dan? I think so. Dan. Okay. Thanks. I'll make sure. I couldn't really hear when you, earlier when we were all in the group. Should we – so we're coming together as a whole right now, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you see everyone? Yes. So I'll, I'll just kind of begin. Me and uh, Bridget kind of just discussed what our motives were and kind of what we had interest in and that nature from my end and from her end and kind of where it was CEO to an a whole organization, how that plays into the factor. Um, we definitely had some great thoughts and great points, but definitely want to reach out to some of these other groups to talk. I know we're going to meet as a group here now, but I definitely want to talk to a couple more of you before we kind of get in that stage of deal processing and of that nature. Right. So I guess what are y'all's thoughts, like kind of conversations you have? Um, I can, I'll go. Um, I kind of told her there's three main things, like I mentioned earlier, that we're focused on, and that's the share price, management, and our workers. Um, as importance level, of course, is our workers and management and keeping the image of Australia, Australia. So we don't want Australian Air to become uh, a United States outsourced company that will lose all of our local brand. But we also are still trying to keep the main balance of our shareholders and of the nature of trying to get what's best for them because they invested in us at a young in the 1990s when we needed that cash flow to be able to build this brand to what it is now. And so we want them to be able to get the return on investment that they were looking for 20 years ago. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then Bridget, she'll tell you kind of where she's at in this. So we, like you mentioned, we discussed, um, a little bit of numbers we didn't confirm or anything like that um and we kind of just discussed the importance of how many um the, man the management um how long to keep them on and also the number of employees that remain in australia mm -hmm. and we just just to confirm we are an australian owned um, 51 percent owned in australia okay. Yeah, so I know something that we talked about is we are all in support of keeping all of the employees in Australia, the same Australian laborers. Um, that's something that has really benefited our society and community and economy and something that has proved very successful for Aussie Air and their reputation and the quality of service and air flights <laughs> that they bring <laughs> air flights is the new term um <laughs> but so that's something we definitely would like to strive to keep and continue and um as well as the management okay. we think they have done an awesome job these past years and are a big reason why aussie Air has been so successful okay anything else that you all discussed that is of great importance those are the two main things we discussed okay. we talked about share price a little bit but those were more um i guess share price is more mm -hmm. that'll probably be a pretty in-depth conversation absolutely absolutely um okay so i guess i can kind of discuss um our plans for the management committee um so as I mentioned before um, in, our, in the private meeting, it's definitely something that is of interest to keeping the managers on. Um, and unfortunately, since we don't currently work with those managers, we don't know how well they work. Not in this, maybe not, that's just for this problem. I apologize. Um, maybe just to see if they are as successful as they seem, I think um, we should, we reserve the right to kind of go in and work with them and see if they kind of work um, with our management style and to kind of to continue to grow the success of 
the company. Um, so that's something that we talked about. So I don't, that said, um, I know that a management contract is something that is desired, um, but at this time, I'm not necessarily comfortable offering one um, to keep all the managers on. And it's not saying that we're gonna go in and fire every single one of them. It's simply to give them a chance to see if they work with us um, and hopefully keep the majority of them and get rid of some that are not. To kind of go off of that, um, is there a possibility that in future, the future of this negotiation that there would be a change in possibly having a contract, even if it is short term, possibly just a year in nature, just to see how our, our workers work or how our management team works. And then possibly within a year, then you can talk, come in and make changes if needed, just to give that one year period to possibly offer just to see how, how our workers work. Absolutely. That's something else. No, I would just say from a from the labor standpoint, I, I think that's a good idea, but we probably prefer to see even a longer term for the management in terms of having to stick around for a little while. We feel like they're you know, we're intrinsic to the values of the company, which is why you want to purchase it and so we have a vested interest in, in the job they've done. Okay, absolutely. Um I think that's a, it's definitely something that we can um, discuss. I don't necessarily, what is a time period or a duration of time that you really would be interested in retaining the members? I think like a lot of things, it, it's going to, you know, it's all depending on the whole, you know, all the different variables that need to be worked out. Okay. So I would guess I would just say, suffice it to say, you know, longer the better, okay. you know, um, but but we're also reasonable and understand the fact that this is, um, there's a lot of moving parts to this. And so I, I guess I'd like to see it in context with all the other things that are kind of on the table, like like the um, frontline workers and keeping uh, people in Australia and not outsourcing and the share price and all these other things. Okay, okay. Um, so that's definitely something that we can discuss and kind of come back to. I guess what are y'all thinking about the uh, workers? So um, it has been mentioned multiple times um, that ideally it'd be a hundred percent of jobs kept in Australia. Um, that is not something that we would currently see is something that is obtainable um, for the growth that we expect in where else here and uh, we're hoping to do. Um, that said, we would be willing to be eight of the workforce in Australia um, for the frontline workers. Yeah, we kind of mentioned just talking about my overall goal was that as an Australian company, um, even if we did not have 100% of our workers Australian, we needed to have a high percentage just because if we get below a certain percentage, then we're not really an Australian company anymore. We're kind of working in an international company. And two, our workers deserve more. Um, they've worked over the past, I mean, they've done such a great job over the past five years in my leadership that I think they deserve to have that next opportunity with a new company, even if they do come in and take over. So that was kind of my thing is just, I, I want to keep building off the Australian concept and not so much become an international company. Yeah, we definitely would probably like it higher than 80%, more around the 90% to 100 range. Um, just because of the Australian economy and um, all of the hard work that all of the workers have done and just everything he does for the quality of the company as well. So, another, I guess, discussion point like with the uh, management team. Like, you know, figuring out the give and take of everything. Okay. Um, I think we can definitely discuss that further. Um, like I mentioned, you're not necessarily, you don't want to become an international company, but in order to kind of grow the brand within Australia, it would be beneficial um, to utilize 
international components, I would say. So I definitely don't want to take away the, the Australian branding or the, the tradition in the last year. Um, it is still a deeply rooted hospitality. I think you agree on that. The um, plane is something that's noticeable all over the world. So that's something that we definitely respect. Um, but that said, in order to kind of grow the company, kind of, um, I think that keeping all of the jobs 100% in Australia may hinder that. Um, so once again, I've of jobs kept in Australia, um, and that is something that once again, I'll reiterate. Well, probably from a Canadian's perspective, it's not a big surprise that we're advocating for 100% of maintaining our labor force. That's true. <laughs> 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 and we do want to hopefully, um, we do want to avoid any uh, sickness or walkouts. Um, and so hopefully that we can come to a deal today to kind of minimize those from happening. I know that we mentioned, uh, give me 100% of the, the, the labor force. Um, is there anything else that would be of interest to you outside of just? The number of employees kept. Um, well, we back to management. We're you know keen on keeping our management around because labor and management have currently had some good relationships. So you know, ideally, we would not rock the boat on that. Um, I think, like you, we don't want to see a sick out of the curve. You know, the rank and file, you know, associates or employees, um, you know, start to feel disenfranchised from the process. You know, that has been something that has happened in the past, and we don't have a lot of control over it, but it, it's certainly a factor that we all have to consider. Um, and I just think, you know, maintaining positive PR. As you said, is is this kind of flagship Australian company not tarnishing that reputation and allowing the, the union to be a participant in building that brand? Absolutely. And um, if you don't mind just answering me this, is or for the union, do you represent all of the workforce within Cosier or simply the front line? That's a great question. Actually, there are three groups that I've been kind of authorized to, to negotiate and we're, we're all kind of a blank mind so it's, it's all together so we have the Australian Service Workers Union which is the airport office and airport staff okay. the pilot union is obviously pilots and the transport transport workers union represents flight attendants baggage handlers and other plane support staff so those are the three groups, but their interests, you know, very much are aligned and overlapping. Absolutely. So, um, what we are interested in doing, I, I, I know that you mentioned those three groups, so we're the outsourcing at this point would be uh, to carry out repairs and maintenance. Um, so, that is something that, say, if Australia is outside of um, the Australia, that's something that we would be interested in maybe hiring local airport workers or people within that sphere to work on the plane. Um, so with that said, that would kind of cause a decrease in Australian workforce, um, simply because the plane would always be serviced by Australian workers. I just want you to know kind of that's where we're coming from in that, in that regard. Okay. Are we on the right time? Yeah, so, so we're, we're in joint meetings. Right? Yeah. And this goes to 750 on the first two, so like it was so fast, you know, like we'll get one of the <laughs> 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 And then 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.
didn't have us leave because it was kind of our heart. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And I will say, like, come, come back when you want because, like I said, if we yeah. want to mix and match, it'll be kind of don't, Yeah, don't, um, Donald was on my account. <laughs> going good how are you what's your name again i'm sorry i can barely hear and all the way to the back what was that sorry it cut out Dan. 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 all right i'm Corey. Corey. i don't know why the i guess the wi-fi went down for a second a minute ago but now i just want to i definitely wanted to talk to you just about everything because i mean you are in charge of the biggest importance to me and to our organization is definitely our workers, and that's what I prioritize first. Money can come last in my my eyes, and so I definitely wanted to kind of see where you're at and kind of see what you're looking for in all this. Yeah, I think I think in that regard we're on the same page. You know, we we would love to keep the kind of the rank and file associates. I keep saying associates because that's what we call them where I work. <laughs> Employees, um, kind of happy and retain in Australia. So that's a big one. Um, and management is important too. So that's, you know, I think we're like-minded on, on those things. Probably, you know, what I'm gathering is maybe management's more, is kind of edges out the, the regular employee for you and the employee kind of edges out the management for me, but it's all important. Yes, sir. And that's definitely, very much important to us and um let me ask you this how are all the workers feeling about everything i know that there you talked about a possible labor strike or something of that nature so i just wanted to see how everyone's feeling about this meeting and of that nature yeah um you know it's something that has come up so i you know i kind of view that i, I guess it's really like a non-sanctioned thing but um the employees, you know, I, I think have got a, a knowledge and an understanding of the um, of kind of the to kind of have that, you know, as a as an option in their in their toolbox, so to speak. Um, and they have discussed kind of an informal action of a sick out if uh, if there aren't sufficient protection for the workers. Okay, um, if you don't mind me asking, what is sufficient for them, do you think? I mean, I don't know if they've given you any hints or of that nature. What what would be sufficient for that? I mean, that's cut and dry, but but I think that's I think that's one reason in my role why it's imperative um, to lobby for 100% um, of jobs kept in Australia because that's so important to them. Um, so that's back to kind of being my number one goal, you know, and I'm not saying that labor wouldn't come off that to, a, you know, if they had to, if, if the pot was sweetened in other ways, but if that's the one thing we got, we'd be thrilled. Yes. And we'd be thrilled too. And I think that's something that I think it'd be really good if me, you and Anna could kind of talk to, because I know the shareholders are really just all about what they can get out of the stock price, but I think they don't care as much about the workers or about management. They just kind of care about the dollar signs. And I think if we could get them kind of on the same boat as us, then I think we could really have like a power over DUA and how to, how to kind of play that factor. Because even if, even if I was to settle just for a two to three year or, possibly one to two year contract for just management that would mean so much more especially if it's a hundred percent and if we were to give them a lower stock share price if if shareholders were i mean that'll be down the road but it could be almost like a try or like a threefold so it'd be like if we were to give a hundred percent of our workers their jobs we would give a one-year contract the lowest possible and then we would also give them a low share price just so that we can satisfy my needs our workers' needs and the shareholders to almost where they get a return on their investment. And, and then we could kind of talk to the shareholders and talk about how much 
the work that we can do for them in the future and of that nature. Yeah. Um, I, I hear what you're saying. I think from the union standpoint, um, we, we have a, a vested interest in a high share price if we can get it coupled with a long-term employment contract. Um, but we're, we're flexible on the price a little bit, maybe, maybe a little bit like you are. Um, I wouldn't, if we could get the, if we could get the hundred percent retention of the, of the employees, um, then I think we would be willing to come down off of the, you know, the maximum. Uh, yeah, I think that would be a great viewpoint because I think, I mean, hundred percent is definitely, I feel like everyone's on board of that. Except I, I would love to talk to the shareholders and see what they feel about that. But I think it's our, our friend from uh, from from uh, Aussie. Is that right? No, from, uh, from your Aussie. It's our friend from uh, down under who who wants the eighty percent retention. Isn't that what she mentioned? Uh, she did, and I I talked to her about it. And my biggest concern was that I just didn't, I wanted everything to be still Australian. So like if we get too far into percentages, then we're going to be talking about possibly giving up too much of the Australian brand. And I talked to that and I said, we negotiated and what a possible thing was, but I said, I definitely would need to talk to you before we even talked about a percentage in that. And I definitely want to shoot for a hundred percent and definitely the contracts just because I mean it's going to take me and my group to be able to keep you guys around even after the even after the deals made between DUA. Did I hear you earlier say that you'd be willing to to think about a shorter management contract because I know that's important to you. It's definitely important but I can't I feel like at this point I need something out of a contract because if I don't make a contract, I don't think I can even finish this meeting to say, at least I'm going to have to go find a job and to go do something because I don't have a job after this. So even if it's a two to three, not even a max contract, just to, like I said, kind of show them, Hey, give us two years and we'll show you what we can do and show you what our workers can do before you come in here and say, Hey, we're going to give you, we're only going to, let you be here for six months and then you're gone. All your workers are gone. We're going to make this thing overseas and then the whole company's gone. So even if it's, I have to sacrifice a little bit on my end to have the people that I have in place now so that we can keep building off what we have in, in the past is it kind of where my mind's at. Well, it sounds to me like if we could keep the bar at the hundred percent, um, retention of Australia-based employees and we could get Anna to be flexible on coming down off the maximum share share price and we could get um, down under to be more flexible on the management contract. We might be able to come up with a deal that everybody could live with. Yeah, I think we definitely could. I think I don't know how long they'll be gone, but once they come back, if maybe uh, we'll meet with Anna and kind of tell her our plans. And I mean, the federal government doesn't, the only thing they have to prove of is if we're Australian 51%. So if we can meet with her and kind of give her where our ideas are, then if she's willing to do that, I think that's a great viewpoint to go on. And then it's just all, it's, it's all of us against DUA and that's kind of where I wanted to be at the end of this is to make sure that everybody's on board and not having to, not me having to negotiate with you and you having to negotiate with Anna and then Anna's having to negotiate with, and we're all negotiating against DUA. And so I think that's a great viewpoint. I think that's a great way to go about it. And that's my only concern is I don't want the image of Ossier to be lost, especially due to labor strikes and of that nature, because then, who, the whoever the news media comes out, it's all looking towards me because I'm I'm in charge of everyone that's in, within the company. So but I think that's a great way to go about it. And I don't, I mean, I don't know how long they're going to be gone. So, Neither. so hopefully not because I I do think like uh, the last kind of individual meeting 
when you kind of got cut off, we were talking about the fact that it didn't have to just be one group. Like we can, you know, fit in eight meetings if we wanted to do it that way. So I think, I think they're keen on that. I think they're probably going to come back. In a minute. But anyway, I think I think you and I can be. Um, I think you know once we get to that um, final negotiating table, I think we kind of understand, have an understanding of of, um, of what would work for each other, and, and we're on pretty good. No, it's, I think that works. Uh, um, so is your goal next to talk to Anna and, and kind of? see what her what her sensitivity is on stock price i think so i think it would be best if we both talked to her i don't know if y'all talked about it a little bit earlier in y'all's meeting but if we both kind of talked to her and told her about our plan and kind of just told her where we're coming from and see what what she's willing to do because i know she bought it at 420 but i know they're trying to get their best investments but if we can kind of play off the work that we could provide in long-term goals my goal would be to, to just get her to come down off of the, the um, you know, the top price a little bit. And, and I kind of guess that she might be flexible, but I think that's the conversation we would need to have with her. Yes. Something I need to do with this. Uh, oh, it's just for me. Okay. Okay. No, I think that's great. And I think she, even if like what I kind of got from y'all's conversation and we were kind of talking is that even to her management and that nature was still a high importance because they kind of put their money into us and not really anybody else. And so I think if we can kind of talk about how the long term will pay off for them and that we can get them above 625 and five to 10 years from now, I think would be, would be a great benefit. All right. Well, um, I don't want to have to um, to play the 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 sick out or the striking card, but it sounds to me like that's a leveraging point. So I'm hoping that that helps us um, with uh, down under and getting some of these things that we might want to get. I think it is too because. I mean, that's all I'm trying to avoid that too. So if I feel like if that comes to the case in the final table, I think we could have like a sign or something to let, cause I don't want that to happen either. Cause then I'm out of all my workers and then I'm probably out of my job too. So if that comes the case, I think it would be a great thing to bring it up so that I kind of know, Hey, that's where your mind's at. So I need, I need to help to get that to where we need to go. All right, what is the, what is the girl's name that's with Down Under? What is... um, Bridget. All right, you want me to stick my head out in the hall and see if they're there? Yes, just if you don't mind. Not at all. If they, um, if they look like they're kind of at a stopping point, I'll ask Anna if she'll jump on with the two of us. All right, perfect.
were back, I found them. All right, perfect. Like wrapped up or? Yes, yeah. Okay. We just got the news of. I think she just gave us. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I, I thought this was like something I needed to read later. Um, I'm not going to read it now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, we, we just got a little bulletin. Did you get anything? Let me check my email. Did did Dr. Warren bring it to you? Yeah. Oh, here it is. Let me read it real quick. Sorry. All right, I read it, but I don't know. I don't think we have the same information. <laughs> no, I think we've all been given a little different. It's interesting how they come up with these things. I'd like to know that you can set the person's mind who figures it all out. Uh, All right, well, that's, that changes some things. <laughs> Corey, do you have any reaction? Do you want to kind of uh, and I understand we're all getting kind of updated news from our various. I don't know how much we're allowed to disclose. Yeah. Is my thing. Um, we'll have to say that, based off the information I just received, that DUA is in business with some is in possible business with someone else, um, and that does have a big play on me, as we kind of mentioned about employment um this new i guess partner i don't know how much i'm allowed to say about it is definitely a possibility of a threat for the future of my job and of my management so along with the workers i definitely need a five-year contract to be making sure that i have a job now based off my information I know me and Dan were talking about it earlier. Is that's what he wants. Uh, that's what he wanted originally too, and now definitely off the news that I've received, that's definitely something I need. And I kind of wanted to hear where if that's something that you're still interested in to to possibly get out of it too. I didn't know if this news in, influences that too. So I kind of talked with him about what. Like how like the correlation of like stock prices, like making sure that we keep jobs in Australia, because that's definitely something that we want. Um, like we feel like that, that's going to be a high impact. Um, but we also don't really want a low stock price. Um, and then, um, so like the last stock price to start off at five, and that's unacceptable um, for us as stockholders um, and to so maybe 525 I would like to go higher than that um, but if the stock price uh, rise um, negatively impacts 
um, the management and the jobs, um, I'm not really sure how much higher they push for. Um, but if I had to ask, what if you know or have an idea as the shareholders would possibly be a bottom line? Yeah, so the bottom line um, is, is 5.5. 5.5? 5. 5. 5. Um, me and Dan were kind of talking, and we believe, as you kind of already have told since the whole negotiation has been that workers and management are two priorities and we definitely want what's best for you guys because of everything that you've put into us. Um, we do believe our, the highest things that we need are our contracts and our workers, but we believe that if we do receive that and get our management and our workers back, you've seen the work that we've done in the past and that if we do have are now privately held, we can have long-term projects in place to possibly increase our market capitalization and bring that up even more to possibly whereas now instead of getting a max of 625 a share we could possibly get you an eight dollar share in the future and but to be able to do that i think at this point we would need to kind of settle below the 625 mm -hmm. and that's something we can talk about all together but i think the lower i think the lower we're able to go share price wise the more she's willing to give us in leeway in our management side. And so that's kind of where we're at. And I, if Dan wants to speak to that, he can kind of say something. It's good information. Um, yeah, I think with all the new information we're, we're getting here, to me, um, it doesn't necessarily change my priorities. It just kind of like reemphasizes them. And so 100% um, Australian based. Uh, um, employees that are not outsourced is still, you know, number one. And I think the only reason why the, the labor union would would um, kind of be, be be accepting of any kind of a lower sales price is if they knew that they were there were some guarantees that they were going to retain their jobs. So that's kind of the perspective I've got there. Um, again. A longer contract we can get for management, the better. But it probably, you know, is a close second to kind of the concerns we have over the rank and file um, employee. Um, but I will say that this new information that we're all getting about um, down under. Um, negotiating or kind of potentially working with another com com another company gives, I would think, gives um, kind of the work, would, would give the workforce a lot of anxiety. And that's, and, and, and that's the kind of thing that threatens or, or kind of exasperates their concerns of getting their jobs outsourced and shipped overseas. And that's the kind of thing that sparks, you know, labor movements like sick outs. So that's my concern. Yes, as I kind of mentioned, um, based off what I just received is, um, if I do not have a five year contract out of this, I will not have a job. Um, so <laughs> at, um, just to put it straight, if I um, if I do not get on this agreement and we do not kind of incorporate together, then it's going to be hard for me to go forward just based off everything. And that's not how I want to proceed. That's not how I want it to be done. I have put my heart into this. And I know Dan wants what's best for us too. And I know that Anna wants what's best too, just because of her investments. But as I kind of mentioned, Anna, would you be open to how we mentioned is kind of lowering our stock price if, if we were able to get that 100% retention and the five-year contract, if we were able to play on that and get that? I think, yes. No, I think, I think a way to go about doing it 
is we can kind of go through each segment with her and I think the last would be the stock price say hey we're gonna we have the only way we can move forward with this negotiation is if we're getting 100 percent in a five year but we're willing to we'll say well we're we're uh, we're willing to give you 575 and then if she's like no I can't do 575 then that gives us room to work down mm -hmm. instead of uh, us starting at 550 our bottom line and then she's already like oh well that I can't do that I need to work them down again I think that just gives us a little bit of leeway in that nature and that if she's like okay yeah I'm down then we don't have to work we even get better than what our bottom line is I mean I don't know how y'all feel about that well, I think at the end of the day um, uh, the conversation is going to come down to you and Bridget you know y'all are kind of the, the leaders here but the way you just described it is not objectionable to me i would support that if it was an open conversation do we have more individual let me ask this real quick. do we have more individual meetings or do we have one big group and then we're done all right, we're on this. I need to know when to start. We can start talking about deal making and all of that. At 20 after, which she said I had five minutes. That's 25 after, so we have plenty of time. And that's it. So I guess the joint meeting, when we finish this, the joint meeting is when we hash out the final agreement. Okay. So I think what you just said is something I would, you know, given the opportunity in a joint meeting, I would, I would vocalize support for. Anna, how do you feel? Yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I want to make sure I have what I have while it's given, I understand it correctly. So, um, but definitely like a, a lower stock price is comfortable with us, but like going below 525 is impossible. Um, but maybe, sorry. Are you guys okay to have us come back in, or is there still time to talk? Maybe like, like five minutes. Just a couple yeah. minutes. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, but like you said, uh, starting at maybe 575, and as long as she did seem willing to like have um, that be something, uh, like the jobs, a uh, higher percentage of jobs in management, um, and then a lower stock price. Uh, but like I said, like there is an absolute minimum for us. Uh, and I agree. I think def definitely can work off of that. Um, I guess the last point is I need, I want to talk to the federal government just to make sure everything that we're talking about here is when it's presented, there's not a problem with it. So I guess one of our last private meetings, I could talk to her because I don't want all of our plans to be ruined as soon as we get in there. And then we're having, we're back to this table here trying to discuss that. She did, um, when I was with them, book was more of a, a preference for a lower stock price. Because it, for, it seemed like from the federal government side that um, a lower stock price would help them in transitioning and um, the, the future of, of the company, they wouldn't have a lot of debt to have. So. Yeah, I think I could talk to her just a little bit about how this other partners of United States company and how that would they could take away from our Australian 51% ownership in the long run if that's the case and we could run into legal problems so yeah. um, I guess when they come back in I'll talk to Summer Grace and talk about that okay sounds good let me go see if her Oh, I'm sorry. What was the other girl's name? But... Uh, Summer Grace. Bridget and Summer Grace. Summer Grace. And you said five, correct? Five years. Five. Your for what? Your contract preference, five years? Yes, five years. Uh, or basically, I'm out of oh. here because I don't have a job. So I definitely need five years. Yeah. 
Here she comes. All right. Hey. Hey. All right. Um, no, I just want to talk to you and talk to everybody and feel like I'm one of the primary negotiators. So I wanted to make sure, kind of see where your head's at and kind of see what's important to you because I've kind of felt what it, what's important to everybody else, but I kind of want to see other than the 50%, 51% Australian leeway, I need it. I want to just kind of know what else is important to you. Yeah, so some things that are definitely important to me, I would say are similar to what's important for probably you as the CEO of Aussie Air and most of the people representing Aussie Air. Um, so we definitely would like for y'all to have long management contracts. Is that definitely something you are wanting as well? Yes, um, especially um, we just received news a couple of um, minutes ago actually that um, contracts to me are of a high importance now. I, if, if I do not have a five-year contract, then we are possibly do not have a job and it possibly could turn our whole company into a huge outsourcing event. So that's kind of no big interest to you guys because if everything starts to get outsourced, then we're looking at under the 51%, then we're running into legal problems. So that's what I kind of want to talk to you about is that what we're kind of discussing is that we need the five-year contract and the 100% workers, and then we're willing to work with the share price. Um, I didn't know, I don't know, is share price a huge deal to you guys? I don't know. Does that affect you at all? Yeah, so I would like it as low of a share price as possible. Um, I'm flexible with exactly what that price looks like, but I would like it to be as low as possible just so that um, DUA doesn't risk acquiring too much debt and that's like going bankrupt and then having to be kind of bailed out of bankruptcy because that wouldn't be good as well and would make everyone lose jobs as well. Uh, I agree and um, sorry the uh, that's what we're kind of willing to work on is that if our primaries are the, the five and five year contract and the hundred percent and if we 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 would be willing to come down off our share price. I know is what we're asking now is 625, but we'd be willing to definitely work our way down if down under is willing to work. So I'd love for you, I know I'm going to be a main spokesperson in this next final agreement, final table type thing. But if you could really, if you could work off of our management skills, this is the better we could help them and their share price. And, the, and that would end up helping you guys with debt right, regulation and talking about management. If if I do lose my job, there, there, like I said, there is a risk of international capabilities with a new partner in the horizon. I know that's something that I don't want to have to bring up to them because that's a high importance to them, and that's kind of full. That's just disclosure in that nature. But I think that's something that me you. Anna and Dan can really talk about is that if we don't get the management we need, then there's not really a future for Aussie Air with the UA. Is what I'm trying to say. And so, and, I know be, what were you saying? Sorry. Um, I knew that I learned that um, someone, an undisclosed investor, just purchased a lot of. Um, a large block of shares and I think it's a connection to DUA and that it would give them enough shares to um, I guess basically take over Aussie Air regardless. So I think it's important that I know that they want to work with Aussie Air currently and the workers and you and everyone and trying to get that going so I guess that's something to keep in mind maybe with being more flexible on things like the stock price but then being harder on the contract and the keeping the jobs and things like that you know 
Yes, and I think that's where we're kind of all headed is because my source, I kind of talked briefly, but there's a potential candidate, a U.S. candidate, to take over as CEO. And so that's why contracts are as high importance to me. Yeah. So the longer contract I get, the more opportunity I have as a job. And if I don't get any contract at all, then I'm, I can't even continue probably this conversation because they've already got somebody lined up. So, no, I think, I think that's a great way to go about it. And I think that's where kind of we're all at. I think money's last in this situation. And I think on our end it is, and I know on y'all's end it's kind of first just because of regulations and of that. But I think we really can work on that, especially in this next few, few minutes and kind of where we're going to go with it. Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know if they're talking, are they talking to? I think they're outside the door. Do you want me to go ahead and get them? Yeah, if you said, if they're good, we can go ahead and start the final okay. group. Okay, I'll go get them. All right, I guess I'll start it off. Um, I guess we kind of finally made it to the final table, as you could say, but um, Bridget, I kind of will be main spokesperson for my group of people and kind of talk about what we're looking for and kind of hopefully we can come to an agreement. Um, after kind of discussing and kind of hearing some things by word of mouth, I will, we kind of need to start with our management and workers as we kind of talked about the whole night is that I think the only way we could really continue negotiations is if we could have a five year contract with our managers and 100% of our workers re return. Um, we definitely would be willing to work on the share price to get to maximize that for y'all. Um, that's kind of our least worries, but after talking to Anna and Dan and definitely Summer Grace, we think that what's best for our company and for our brand is to remain the people that we are. And so that's kind of where we're at. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it and kind of where, where you're at and kind of from your previous talks. Yeah, absolutely. So you're kind of reiterating a lot of what has, what has been disclosed to me in previous conversations. Um, and I definitely understand and um, applaud the want to keep all of the workers completely like, um, that said, I know I've mentioned it before, but that's not something that we, we I can't agree to the terms of five years, 100% um, at this time. So I know I mentioned 80% prior. Um, I do, I heard you before, Corey, when you were saying um, that if you wouldn't feel comfortable going back to your people and saying, I, I have nothing for you. I have no promises. I can't. I can't promise anything. Um, and I agree with you that company morale would completely plummet. And so, what is the point of purchasing a company that no one wants to be on and doesn't feel comfortable uh, with the that with the people owning it? So that said, um, I do want to work in a management contract. Um, what we can do at this time of the year. So, like I mentioned before, one of our biggest concerns in terms of management is not knowing the managers or the workers from the outside. It looks like everything is working perfectly well. It's obviously profitable, and that's why we're interested in purchasing the company. Um, but that doesn't mean that once we kind of own the company and we're working directly with those who are in charge, we don't um, kind of un find any problems or existing, maybe like uh, existing problems that we just were unaware of. Um, so in that term, 
where you would be interested in offering a one-year minimum contract. Like I mentioned prior, that does not mean that we would go in and fire everyone right after the first year, but it would have us have a firmer grasp on the people who we would want to keep. Maybe that's 100%, maybe that's not. Um, and she would work best with, with the new ownership. Um, if you don't mind me asking, um, why the one year? Uh, do you have plans of possibly, or do you have in the works of someone already interested in the job? Is that why you're willing to only go to a one-year contract? Is that is that the case? So that's something I can't really just, I can't disclose this time. Um, but it's not simply for your job that would be the one year. It'd be everyone within management. Um, so it would be the whole C-suite, every managerial level employee. Um, and I think I mentioned prior, it's not something in regards that we want to go in and get rid of the whole entire management team. It's just something that when we go in, we want to ensure that it's going to be a profit. It would be profitable for us as owners. Um, and kind of have a, uh, it would allow us to have a fuller picture of what's the inner workings of the company. Um, and that would grant the security for everyone at the manager, manager, management level while also allowing us the flexibility that if someone isn't working out to our, our liking, we can be able to terminate that or find a different position. Okay. Um, just kind of based off what I'm hearing, I'm kind of a little nervous about just taking a one year contract just based off kind of what you heard. I mean, I know you're in full disclosure of things that could possibly happen, but the, the fact that it's multiple people that could possibly come in to take over my whole management team kind of really scares me in that nature. Um, let's come back to that. That's definitely on my mind, but one key that I don't think anything can change is possibly our employment retention. It has to stay at hundred percent, especially for y'all's sake and my sake. If we don't get that hundred percent, we're definitely going to have labor forces we're going to have labor strikes we're going to have all kinds of deal and not just for my sake but for your sake if that does happen then down under is not going to look good because they're not treat they're going to see all, all these strikes going on Aussie air is going to go under because of this so I think if we could at least agree on possibly a hundred percent retention even if management is taken over down the road we have to have that 100 percent retention because of the brand if the brand loses its labor and loses that then everything else is going to go up in flames so i think that's something i don't know how your thoughts are on that or what you're what you're at i kind of uh discussed it a little bit before about how um we aren't looking to retain 100 percent at this time um because we do have ideas to export some airplane maintenance um not all but some and so i was wondering if we could work together to find a agreeable solution um, that maybe wouldn't retain 100%, but we'll find a number that works for both of us. I know you mentioned 80%, but is that is that still there, or would you be willing to work up from there? Because 80%, I don't think, is going to cut it at this point for us. What is, other than um, retaining the jobs, what is the biggest concern for you um, in keeping 100% employment? solely in Australia? Uh, mainly because of just like as I mentioned the brand uh, in general I mean that's the one thing worry for me that's what anything talking with Summer Grace it's a worry for her it's a worry for Dan it's even a worry for our shareholders that if we're giving up so much of our company to and I know Down Under is an Australian company but they're in works with other international companies as well that how is Aussie Air going to continue to be Aussie Air if we're not in Australia? And that's kind of where our concerns are too, especially for our local federal government and our local labor force and our shareholders. Our shareholders put their money into our company for Aussie Air. They didn't put it in for an international airline. So I think that's where we're at is that if we need to get that 100% to make sure that Aussie Air is Aussie Air, it's an Australian air company. and I think that is kind of a, I know it's a deal breaker for me. It's a deal breaker for Dan. It's a deal breaker for a lot of people at this table that if hundred percent isn't achieved, then we're going to have to rethink and have to rethink our whole entire deal in this whole, whole negotiation. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have. Thank you.
And I'll just add to that that, yeah, the 100% you know, employment is so important to our people. And now there's been these reports that um, Down Under is, is looking to um, strike deals with um, aerospace companies that do aircraft maintenance outside of Australia. And that's before a deal is even broken. Is it has even been brokered? And that's the kind of thing that makes the frontline workers very uh, concerned about their employment and longevity. And that's what brings about a lot of labor strife that I know nobody wants to see happen. Right. And it's like if you're already making a deal in one area, when is it going to be the next kind of a thing? And so, kind of. Trying to retain those employees and keeping that employee longevity and that employee relationship there is extremely important for the future of the company as a whole. Of course, and I, I'd like I mentioned to you prior um, that those negotiations uh, with Aerotech, which is a Malaysian company, are so significant. Um, so we don't have any set plans in regards to that at this time. And the I think if, if I know that if we agree to a percentage of Australian Australian employees that we retain, that is not at all correlated with the contract managerial years. That so those are two separate issues at this time. So if we agree to retain 80% of Australia workers for the on the front lines, that's going to be a number that stays. So that will we will never go below that. Well, you will never go below what? Sorry, what was that? Um, so, so going forward, even if we do export airplane maintenance out to Malaysia, that doesn't mean that anything outside of that will ever be exported outside. So we still want to be a primarily Australian company. The company that's buying um, or hoping to buy these shares is a, is a primarily Australian company, and that's something that's very important to us. Hey, let me talk to you about this um, kind of as an option, a potential option for everyone uh, talking with Anna. If we were to possibly be up to go back up to the 100% that we're asking for, would you be willing, we would be willing to offer a lower share price. So instead of our 625, we'd be willing to, let's say for every 10% that you're willing to give us, we would go down 25 cents in value. So if we got our 90% jobs in Australia, it would be actually, we're not even gonna talk about 90% because we're looking for 100%. So 100%, we would be willing to offer you 575. And that's a 50% decrease and you're still paying a very good premium for, or a very low premium for what the future of Aussie area is. And uh, I mean, there's not many places you can go buy an eleven billion dollar market capitalization company for that price at that share price right now, and so I just would like to know what your thoughts are on that. So we're definitely, uh, I'm definitely willing to use those two in conjunction with each other. Um, unfortunately, not at those numbers. I think we mentioned before that obviously eighty percent is our point that we would like to get to 100% is yours. Um, so we are willing to meet in the middle at 90% if that's something that would agree with you. And we would agree to 575 and 90%. Uh, I mean, I know a huge deal, as I've kind of told this whole time, is that 100% is really needed. Um, I'd love to hear Dan's thoughts on what his thoughts would be on a 90, a 10% change. I know that's a huge deal for him and especially for me, but I would love to know what his thoughts are on that. Um, obviously it's not, you know, I'm still painting to, to relinquish the hundred percent because I feel like the labor is here for one thing. That's what they're here for. Um, so while I'm not necessarily just eager to concede that, I think probably the, the other factor, the other big factor, maybe one or two things, but the other big factor on that is the management contract. 
Yeah, so I think we're not agreeing, uh, we're not agreeing to anything exactly, but we keep those two kind of benchmarks on the table as a point of reference. Can we also discuss the management contract in context in context with those two things as well? Yes, no, I agree with you, and I think he's open to it. I mean, him talking management is a huge deal to our workers as well as to be able to work for the same people that have led them this whole time. And I think if we had to come down from that hundred percent employee at the absolute least, we would have to have a three year management contract at the absolute least. I mean, so sorry, just to clarify three years, 90%. So three years contract and 90% workforce kept in Australia? Yeah, so if the only way to be able to meet the 90% would be to match it with a three year contract for the 575, if we were to even, if we you can't match the three year, then I don't see how we could come down to 90% because we kind of have to match it in that nature is that I can't be worked. I can't only have a one year contract with only 60%, 80% of my workers. I just wouldn't work that well. Okay. I still don't think that's something that we can agree to. Um, I understand. I see where you're coming from. Uh, and I'm definitely listening to what you're saying. So I definitely want to. Come to a, something that would work for both of us. I want to keep this negotiation going and I want to keep it in this group. Um, so, I, I know that 100% in five years are the most important for you. Um, would you, what is more important? And I, I guess this is, I'm interested to see if it's the Percentage of jobs kept in Australia or the employment contracts length, which of the two carry the most weight and importance for you two? Um, for my nature, um, definitely would be obviously both, but I think to have Aussie Air go where it needs to go, the employee needs to be higher, especially for the labor force sake. And for Aussie Air's image, as I mentioned a lot, is that if we go too far, our image is gone soon as one person, our union hits the streets and strikes and everything else goes on. So I think I still do need a contract that is of a longer length. I'll tell you kind of why. Um, I have heard news in Sydney today that a US airline ambassador of Blue Jet, he was one of the founders and chief executives. He is now in the has been approached by you guys to possibly head up privatize Aussie Air, and I, that doesn't sit extremely well with me just because of the fact that you're kind of already assuming that Aussie Air is privatized and we still have the option of keeping it publicly traded, and so I mean I I understand where you're coming from. You have to look at all your options and. It's, it doesn't offend me in one nature, but I think in my side of it, I have to keep the three year and I have to keep the 90% to even have a shot of taking this to the next level of being a privately traded company. And I mean, I don't know how Anna feels about this. We could be willing to probably go a little bit further down on share price, but that I set 575 is already almost is literally probably the bottom that we can go as of now. So that's kind of where I'm at. That's kind of what I've heard. And just kind of speaking from where I'm from, that's kind of what we need. I'll, I'll, before Anna speaks, I'll just simply say from a labor standpoint, I, I feel like you know, there's been some good faith concessions made um, by putting those two benchmarks on the table and the 90% year. And those are kind of coming off of, I think, our perspective of what our our what we really wanted coming into this. So I will second uh, the expression. Um, I'd be curious as to what Anna might have to say about willingness to talk about stock price if that could be a variable that could make this more palatable. Yes. Um, does willingness to talk about stock price 
what um how how do they go with that? Does that mean that um, if it comes down, then others can go up? I think right now, um, if we tend to say that we're going with a 90% in a three year, we can't go up anymore in stock price. If anything, we should be pretty good quickly because um, I think I, I, I recognize that. This is an Australian company. We want to retain the Australian aspect of it and retain, retain the jobs. Um, but by granting control to the management um, for three years and kind of proceeding on the one course, I do see that the stock price has. So I initially approached with five dollars. Um, so and we countered with well, we talked about five seventy five now. So I'd be willing to. And it dropped back down to 525 and for the other question. So you're saying uh, stock holders is that 525, the others at 90 or 3 could go up. Not go up, could stay. So in full disclosure, this isn't the I know we've talked about, and I, I do want to stress how important I find the workforce and retaining a workforce and keeping in Australia. Um, we do have another offer on the table that would allow us to obtain a change of fresh air from a future employer to the state of um, And that wouldn't allow any of the positions to, to keep the management and the people safe. And that's why we're still in the chairman working with you guys to keep the workers safe and the management safe. Um, so I do want to stress that that is an important. That said, we can't keep 100% in five years. Even if they drop the stock price all the way down to 525, you can increase the laborers to 100%. Uh, we could go up to 90% by the laborers. And I'd be willing on that one. I would still like to do the one year management contract for that. So you're saying a one year for 90% for 525? Um, on my end, um, I think, and on Anna's end, and probably Dan's end too, if we were to drop the share price 50 cents, and then we're dropping my con our contract too. That's a lot of sacrifice that we're giving you and not really giving us anything in return. Um, I don't know how about everyone else feels in this group, but I think we could possibly be willing to take the three year contract for 90% for 550 because I know I mean, we're willing to go down another 25%, but we have to keep that 90% at three years or everything. It's, I'm just afraid that we're going to lose what we built. Yeah, I will, I will kind of reiterate that too. I think, um, I feel like this group did a large thing to get to the 90%. I so I feel like we kind of got to those two things. And I feel like that's a pretty fair balance for the whole. I think the other side is like the like the fair price is kind of the, the variable at play. And you know, I do feel like if the ninety and the three, the ninety percent, the three year contract could be firm, that would keep the, the rank and file happy. Avoid any kind of disruption to the uh, to the workflow with work stoppages or say outs. Right, and to that point, I think if we can't get the management contract hired or the jobs kept in Australia hired, um, then I do have authority to implement a delay 
or discourage the deal from happening, which I really don't want to have to do, but I think just for the benefit of everyone as a whole and the long term success of Aussie Air, I think those factors are really important that we can't go below three years or 90%. I would, I would hope that this other deal is potentially on the table because everything we've been talking about the image of the company and the iconic status of it it's kind of synonymous, synonymous with Australia itself. That other deal and abandoning all these other kinds of things that we're negotiating for management and workforce, it really might do a lot of damage in terms of maintaining that, that reputation of the company. So, Which is why I'm here, and that was a decision. That is something that. Our company is very interested in, uh, and we do want to work with you guys. And I know it's just been an arduous task, and we do want to agree on something. And I agree that it's taken us a period of time to get to three years. Um, in order to settle on those terms, I think that something like, I think we have to discuss the stock price. I know we go, um, and we can go forward. And how that plays forward. So, in order to keep a three and ninety, um, you said you're not comfortable with the five seventy five. Are you comfortable with the five seventy five? I think for three and ninety, I'd, I'd really prefer to be five twenty five. I understand that it's currently trading at four twenty, um, which is actually an increase from what it has been trading for the past two years. So, from the average price of I believe it's three forty eight. Now they're about to what the current stock prices. I'll, I'll just say I think the community is going to look at that. Because it's at the 90s. Because it's at the 525. In the context of the 90s, it's three years. What was the counter? Uh, um, three years, 90%, um, and a 525 stock. I mean, I've said all along that money's not my huge thing, but I also am in favor of my shareholders and I wouldn't, it's up to kind of, I'll work with Anna and kind of see what she thinks about this. I mean, we, we would prefer to buy over 525. Um, but if, if it's a 90 and the three is firm, So I will, if it's 525, uh, that there is 90% retention in three year managerial contracts. I know I could offer. <laughs> um, that has maybe. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So, is Corey, that? Wait, can we agree on the 525? Is that what she said? Yes. Uh, yes, after kind of looking at everything, and as long as Anna. Dan and Summer Grace are good with it. I'm definitely good with going with 525 for 90% retention and a three-year contract for my management staff. So I think that's something we can agree on. Perfect. Perfect. Everybody got what they wanted. Not at all. <laughs> you can stop recording it if you want to.